everybody, welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns. What I've got to show you today is the Sig Sauer ASP20 22 caliber brake barrel air rifle. Before I get started, quick reminder, I'm on Airgun 101. Head on over there to check out my other videos as well as a whole bunch of others about air guns. Also, there's a bunch of different ways to support my channel. Buy clocks and stickers and all kinds of different ways or just send me a lovely donation from the goodness of your heart. Um, so, getting right into it. The ASP-20 is brake barrel air rifle nitro piston. Um, it's kind of odd for me to do a brake barrel because I'm a PCP guy. So, a um, little history on this is a couple of months ago I had a chance to shoot one of these and I was really impressed by it. And what impresses me about a Springer is accuracy. That's what it all boils down to is accuracy. And I was really surprised at the accuracy that I was getting out of this rifle. Now, springers are hold sensitive, and for me to shoot a springer, it's like, man, I gotta retrain myself, I gotta figure out all these different holes, and I'm like, man, that's one of the reasons why I don't shoot them. But, they also have significant advantages. I don't need a big old bottle of air, I don't need all the equipment that goes along with that. Um, I can just, I can just shoot all day, and I don't have to worry about it. As long as I got enough pellets, bingo, 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 I'm just good to go all day long. Another consideration when you're dealing with uh, brake barrels and spring pistons and all that um, is the scope you put on the rifle. And if you put like a regular traditional rifle scope on there, the spring piston could blow it apart and you'll be scratching your head like, why can't I hit anything? Why is my reticle up in the top corner? <laughs> it will rip your scope apart. So make sure if you're going to put a scope on a spring piston rifle, get one that's rated for it. Now I've got the Tasco Air Rod 3 to 9 by 40. This is an made for air rifles. This focuses down to 10 yards, waterproof shock and fog proof and um, <laughs> AR squared. <laughs> air recoil rated, they say. So I just wanted something get me uh, get me shooting. And this, this is retailing about 75 bucks. Uh, the gun itself is either $350 for the synthetic or $430 for the wood. I opted for the wood because, well, I do woodworking. What do you want? <laughs> so, for just over that $500 mark, I ended up with a rifle, the scope, and everything else I needed. And there she is. This is the ASP-20 from Sig Sauer. It's got a little bit of weight to it now that I have the scope on and everything. I believe this comes in at 8.5 pounds without the scope. Um, solid, solid made rifle and I've been shooting it a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to take my first shots on camera so you missed it. <laughs> but I just like it. I just like it overall. Uh, let's see where's my balance point. Right about there is my balance point so not bad there. Shoulders nice. And that's about all there is to it. I mean other than that it's a spring gun. I like the stock. It's kind of a unique finish to put on a wood stock. Uh, like a very dark black or gray type of stain on this wood uh, gives it a unique look. Stippling, stip, stippling, stippling, I forget to say. Uh, that's fine. The trigger, mm, yeah, you know, it's adjustable. How's that? <laughs> it coming out of the box, it might leave you uh, wanting for a little bit uh, better, but it's adjustable so you can tune it to how you like it. Uh, another thing I noticed that I kind of didn't like, and these are pros and cons, guys. You know, this is just me going through that list. Like the rifle, price tag's nice, wood stock is nice, you know, all this good stuff. When it came to uh, a couple of things I noticed. When it came to putting the scope on, uh, this scope came with, uh, let's see here, it came with these dovetail mounts, which... I'm sure they work fine. They're wonderful. Uh, but two things, they have the Torx wrench um, screws in them. And that, that kind of bugs me when I have to deal with it. I have to have this whole other type of wrench. I can't just bring my Allen key set and have everything I need. I got to now bring Torx. So I was kind of let down about that. But other than that, they're just, they're scope rings. They're just solid scope rings. They have a, uh, the little nub down there. So the, the stopper, you know, for spring guns. Uh, but they're dovetail. And when I took it out of the box, I said, oh, darn it, i got to wait a little longer to do my shooting and to do my review because pick a tinny rail on the SIG. 
Interesting note on the Picatinny rail is it's welded on. So <laughs> you're not taking this off and putting on a dovetail mount or customizing it in any way, moving it forward, back, no. It is welded in place on this rifle, so you get what you get. Um, at first, I was kind of scratching my head and disappointed that it was a dove, that it was a uh, Picatinny. So I got to thinking about that, like Picatinny rail versus dovetail, and I ended up being happy about it because even though I couldn't use the rings that came with the scope, um, I started thinking about, about it like this. With a dovetail mount, you have to use your stop pin if you have a real heavy hitting rifle, which I don't think this one is. And I've had them in the past where they will rip the stop pin off. <laughs> that was the uh, Ruger Airhawk Elite. Stay away from that one. That's a bad rifle. Um, but I can use a stop pin here and the clamps. Or if I have a Picatinny rail, now I've got the Picatinny rail itself acting as a stop plate on both this mount and that mount, plus the clamping pressure that I put on. So it's like, you know what? This is a good thing. I like it. I, I dig it. Another thing I noticed about the rifle is the welds. Um, I like to swap out my moderators for, you know, something that's a little better, well known, so I can play around with it and get it as quiet as I need it. You don't have that option with this. You get what they gave you and it is welded on there. So forget about taking it off. Um, you can see it's got a bunch of baffles inside the moderator to help quiet it down and it works. It works pretty well. but. The downside to that and the downside to not being able to take off your moderator is cleaning. The first thing I do when I get an air rifle is I clean the barrel. Hands down. Brand new, used, doesn't matter. I clean that barrel. And with this one, you need something like a drinking straw to stick in here for whatever your cleaning style is. You have to stick it all the way in here into the barrel itself in order to catch whatever you're bringing through there. Um, I, I like the patchworm kit and to catch that tip got to put this in every time. As soon as it comes out the straw, I pull it out, pull it through, and then repeat the cycle again. So I was a little let down that I can't take that off. Okay. Oh, one thing I do like about this one versus other springers is the safety. It's, first off, it's easy to get to. Bingo, and I can shoot. Second, it's on both sides, lefties. <laughs> That's right. So, ambidextrous, even with the safety. But what I really dig about it is every time I cock this rifle and I bring it back up, it does not reset the safety. Other rifles, you have to push that safety off between every shot, and it drives me a little bit crazy. So, <laughs> it's another thing I was very happy about. A little bit about the scope I picked. This is the Tasco 3-9x40 air rifle rated scope it focuses down to 10 yards that's one of the things i was looking for because a springer to me i shoot pcp long range i don't really shoot springer long range but i have no doubt that this is capable of decent groups at 100 yards um with the right shooter behind it <laughs> uh the tasco was a pretty neat nice deal because it just gives you that nice three to nine by 40 but it also comes with a set of rings even though I couldn't use them for this application, Dovetail Picatinny. Um, it still is a good package deal, and I'll put these in my supply stack to use on something else. A one-inch tube on this. It's got the little caps over your, uh, over your turret adjustments. Other than that, it's got the adjustable ocular up here, not a side wheel focus, and that's pretty much it. Here's your zoom, here's your AO adjustments. Very simple. I put a level on mine because I just always put a level on my stuff, so. Um, now about the reticle. This comes with a Truplex reticle. That's the one with the fat line, and then it goes to a thin line for the crosshairs, and goes back to fat line again. I was after a price point, 75 bucks. I thought it was a good package deal. For me, shooting a Springer, I'm gonna do that at shorter range, so I don't necessarily need the mill dots, but, I'm the type of guy who really likes feedback from the scope reticle. I want that thing to be telling me some information when I'm lining up a shot and I'm taking a shot or I miss a shot. Um, and this is just crosshairs. It's going to give me a little bit of information if I'm off right, left, up, down. 
It's going to give me a little information, but not that precise information that, say, a mill dot would, or something with some type of hash lines or MOA lines, whatever. Um, all that stuff gives you feedback as a shooter. But for 75 bucks, I said, hey, you know what? I'll give it a shot. So far, the glass, it's pretty clear, and it focuses how it should. Um, I thought it was a little bit blurry out at 100 yards, but uh, I adjusted my ocular a little bit, and I got rid of that. Um, it was like a double image type thing going on. I was like, what is going on? Gave myself, a, uh, gave the ocular a little twist, and found out, hey, that's where your problem is. Zoomed it right in, and we are good to go. So, I'm going to put that through its test too to see, hey, what does it look like at 10 yards? Can I actually focus at 10 yards? Okay, guys, so yeah, it does focus into 10 yards. I'm actually sitting here at about 12 and a half uh, mark on the, on the AO, so that's a little bit off, but I'm not too worried about that. I don't usually pay attention to that. Let's see if we can get any closer here. I got a stick out there that's at uh, five yards outside of this window, plus window to here. I'm focusing in at six yards. <laughs> and I'm maxed out on this, uh, on this AO, and uh, yeah. And on the other hand, it's gonna go to, well, it's gonna go to infinity. Um, and yeah, that works too. Not a bad little scope for 75 bucks. All right, let's get to shooting, guys. I'm tired of talking. I want to get some shooting out there and show you guys some groups. I got light winds, let's call it about three, three miles an hour, three to five, and I'm going to shoot at 50 yards with this. Remember, I'm not a springer shooter, so if my groups suck, <laughs> it's probably me. <laughs> but I'm going to do what I can to show you guys a nice group out there. I'm going to be using JSB 18 grains for, for this, and <sighs> you guys called me out last time I did a springer review for letting go of this uh, between every time I cycled, but it had been so long since I had shot a springer, you'll have to forgive me for that. But I'm gonna make sure that I don't do that this time. Low and right. One thing I've noticed about this rifle is uh, a lot of springers you can just grab and pull. This one you kind of you got to get a little smack. It's got a, it's got a little um, like almost a lock that you need to break, and then it'll come down for its uh, for its pull. Uh, the last springer I did a review on had a much more of a pull to it that um, was kind of a turn off really. I like an easier pull, but hey, you're compressing a spring in here, so. You're going to have to deal with it, you know what I mean? That was me, I did that one. group out there at 50 yards. I think the gun's still settling in after the barrel clean job I did. So I think it's going to tighten up. Not only that, but I was changing my holds during my shooting. You know, I want to do that. But, um, I'm learning how to hold this gun. This is different. It holds different than other springers. Um, I've always struggled with other springers, and this one, it's not as much of a struggle. Let's try another group out there. That's how hold sensitive guns are. Those two landed on almost on top of each other. I paid very close attention to replicate my hold. That one landed almost on top. 
of the other two. Let's see if we can get a nice tight five shot out of this. Now that I said that, you watch. I think that one was just low of that, of that tight group. And that one was way high. Next up, I think I am gonna shoot at a bunch of turkeys. Let me set up a video camera and I'm gonna get out there and shoot my nemesis. I got four turkeys set up down range that are set up at a certain yard. It's because a certain event called Extreme Bench Rest is coming up soon. I will not be shooting a springer. I just don't like turkeys. Woo, looks like it was off to the right. My fault, I rushed the shot. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if that one counts or not. I think I hit the post. Oh, that would not have counted. Same exact spot on the black one. Jeez. All right, guys. Let's see what I can do. 100 yards. I don't even know where my aim point is, so this might take me a while just to get settled in for aiming. Oh, I see it way down the bottom. <laughs> This couple shots, bingo, you got it. Nice rifle. I'm glad I got it. All right. All this talk about the golf ball makes me want to try it. So here we go. It's about the third or fourth shot you start feeling like I can hit everywhere else but the golf ball. Oh, what happened there? That thing went way, way low. long enough so yeah you can do it <laughs> uh, that is fun I don't care who you are shooting an exploding golf ball at 100 yards is just fun 
Ah, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up and say I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Do all that happy stuff that helps my channel grow. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Sig Sauer ASP20 and the Tasco Air 3 to 9 by 40 scope. As always, happy shooting and thanks for watching. <laughs>